The UK housing market is effectively closed for business with house builders like Taylor Wimpy and Barrett's developments shutting construction sites around the country. Now it comes after the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson essentially closed all non-essential shops last week. So what's in store for the UK property market? Here to help me understand that is Jeremy Leaf. He's a London estate agent and the former Ricks residential chairman. Jeremy, great to chat to you. I mean, there's so much to discuss. Let's talk about the housing market firstly. I mean, obviously, when business gets going again, what are you expecting to happen to prices? Should we be bracing for a crash? And how long is it going to take to recover? Well, it's the $64,000 question, which everybody is asking. I think what the answer is, it depends really on how long it goes on and uh, what impact the changes that the government have tried to put in place have. Um, if there's going to be um, a very uh, deep recession and uh, large scale unemployment and short term working, and a lot of people are complaining that they're not receiving the payments that uh, the government have promised, then of course, it's going to be very difficult uh, for for business to recover quickly. Any business, not just the property business, and that is likely to really to lead to uh, correction in values. But um, I wouldn't have thought it would probably have a more immediate effect on of impact on transaction numbers rather than prices. OK, so, I mean, in terms of um, the Bank of England, obviously, we've seen them slash rates from three quarters of one percent down to just 0.1 percent. But given that sort of buying and selling of houses is essentially on hold, is this going to filter through into mortgage lending? Um, I think it will. What the, the, the lenders seem to be more preoccupied at the moment with their um, ne ne renegotiating with their um, customers in terms of their uh, payment terms and payment holidays and so on. But certainly they are out there. They're only going to make money if they lend it. And um, they will certainly want to do that, but they will not want to do so at great risk. So I, I anticipate, again, depending on how long it goes on for them, uh, poking their toes in the water, mainly though for the higher loan to values, maybe minimum 40 percent. And then they feel a bit more protected as far as any changes in values are concerned. Yeah, so what about different pockets of the housing market that you expect to be hit hardest? Well, uh, I would say probably the, the higher loan to value in where people are borrowing more, that is going to be more difficult for um, lenders to um, buy into because they will perceive the risk. But it depends on, as I said, how long it goes on for and what really happens to values. Value can change quite a bit quickly and it can vary quite a lot between areas, as I'm sure you know, we've seen in the past, uh, not least in in the, in the Brexit um, scenario, which was has not behind us, but certainly had a big in, a bigger impact on some some property types and some areas more than others. So, what's the likely knock-on effect for the major house builders in the UK? Do you think? Well, the house builders are affected like all of us. And I think it, it's it's like what happens when the music stops, you know, what 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 are we holding at that time? And uh, those that which are in who are in cash or which are in cash um, who, who are not too exposed at the particular time. I don't think many people for saw, saw this was coming. And of course, it's very difficult to, to change plans very quickly. But I think a lot of the house builders have been holding cash for some time. They are fairly fleet footed and they're in a good position to take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. But there'll be just as many who are, who are not. And I think individual decisions will have to be made. But yes, yeah, certainly opportunities there, I would have thought. What about the commercial property space? Obviously, at the moment, most people are working from home. I mean, is this going to sort of be the beginning of a new transformational shift? I mean, what are you expecting for office space in the long term? Are we going to go back to that model of all sitting at our desks? Or is this going to be the new way of working? Well, I think one thing that the virus and implications of it have shown that it's accentuated or accelerated a lot of the changes which were underway before it struck, uh, such as working from home and uh, webinars, conference calling, uh, fewer face to face meetings, all, all those things um, which which are now um, happening. We, we've got no choice. There's no choice. And I think that's what's going to happen. But another trend which was uh, we were seeing more of, and that's more demand for office space. Now, that probably is not going to happen as quickly. But again, depending on timing, because there were so many 
um, office to resi conversions that it resulted in, in, in certainly uh, fewer um, office opportunities. So we were, we were seeing quite a lot of um, office users looking for space in the period up to it, up to the, uh, the end of Brexit and before the virus started. And what about the sector as well because we know there was a lot of pain going on in terms of that sector of the property market already is this just another example like you say of the coronavirus speeding up a trend that was already underway um yeah it's a good question um about retail um i think what we might see there is perhaps um uh, a pd explosion permitted development explosion because i think it will a lot of dawn on a lot of people if it hadn't before that not just not are, are not only are the retail users unlikely to return, but maybe not for the foreseeable future. And um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of people will see the opportunities, and maybe local authorities will. Whereas in the past they've been wedded to the idea, yes, it must stay as a retail or quasi commercial use. Um, they would take advantage of perhaps improved flexibility from from government and. Uh, Dare I say it, there may be uh, a lot more babies out there when this ends. And so it could be, give a little bit of a boost to um, demand. And um, so we'll see more of these retail units becoming residential. And in terms of the overall property market, do you think there are certain sectors that are likely to fare slightly better or worse during this whole pandemic? And also geographically, do you expect to notice any differences as well? Well, I think that... Um, depending, of course, on the level of the pound, um, that's already dropped and given opportunities a, a, an advantage to, to foreign investors. So I think the city uh, could benefit if that, that continues, that, that trend continues, because uh, clearly that, that gives it an advantage just on financial alone, apart from the other advantages of we hopefully all know of living and working in London. So that's one area which always seems to sooner or later come off best. Um, but I think lettings, uh, again, that ability to be flexible, I mean, we've noticed ourselves that uh, in our businesses, uh, we're charters of airs and, and sales and letting agents, management and so on. And that has held up, you know, really quite well. Um, so lettings, again, is is likely to, to uh, thrive. And I think that will be the first area as well as um, new, new homes, um, because again, being no, chain free and relatively easy to move into, those are the area, uh, that's the other area where I expect um, things will turn around quite quickly. Jeremy, thank you so much for your time as always. Okay, pleasure, nice to see you. That was Jeremy Leaf, a London estate agent and the former Ricks residential chairman. I'm Victoria Scholar and thanks for watching IGTV.